Okay, um, I'm Jason uh, from ESC Group, and I'm a PhD student. And uh, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, many thanks to the IMSC Group to hold this poster session. And uh, today, I'm very happy to share a mechanistic model of lithium and dilithium in silicon for lithium batteries. Um, as we know, silicon has been an attractive alternative to con conventional, you know, anode materials such as graphite. Um, however, uh, due to its very ex exceedingly high theoretical capacity and its no cost, however, there still lacks a uh, uh, you know theoretical model to describe the unique behaviors of this kind of material. Well, uh, silicon uh, is a kind of uh, alloying material uh, which shows very unique behaviors, and this figure shows that uh, the voltage curves of uh, silicon. Uh, uh, is dependent um, on the diffusion depth. When silicon is uh, diffusion to above uh, 0 0.05 volts, and the voltage curves you can see uh, in this figure uh, present a uh, sloping shape. While when silicon is uh, highly diffusion to below this uh, voltage, the, the voltage will jumps and uh, uh, presents a flat plateau in the diffusion branch. And in addition, in the latter case, um, there is a kind of a crystalline silicon phase uh, that is a D15 silicon four is uh, uh, will grow very abruptly at the end of lithium process. While in the reverse process, this crystalline phase will disappear not uh, very instantaneously, but uh, disappears very linearly with time growing in the diffusion process. And these unique, uh, you know, behaviors stimulated our great interest. And uh, uh, firstly, uh, wh why why the different diffusion depth well, uh, just uh, results in different electrochemical behaviors of silicon? And secondly, uh, we wanted to know what's the role of this crystalline phase play on the um, on the uh, unique behaviors of silicon. And in order to understand these mechanisms, uh, we uh, firstly identify the reactor pathways of silicon. And the previous modeling studies uh, uh, mostly focused on these two electrochemical reactions, which can be represented by the, uh, can be translated by the BV equations shown here. However, the crystallization process from the amorphous D15 silicon four to the crystalline D15 silicon four here, and the amorphization of the crystalline uh, to the amorphous phase are, are still unclear. In our project, uh, in order to understand, in order to model the amorphization process of this uh, crystalline phase, that is the step B2 here, we noticed that uh, this process follows a uh, peeling off mechanism with very distinct phase boundary uh, in the experimental test. And so this is a kind of a heterogeneous process. And uh, we believed that uh, uh, in this uh, heterogeneous amorphization process, the crystalline silicon phase will uh, overcome an extra energy barrier in contrast to this amorphous phase to form this amorphous phase. This will result in an elevated uh, you know, voltage, uh, equilibrium volt potential here. And uh, uh, in order to model the, you know, the crystallization process, uh, that is the pink uh, pathway here, we noticed that uh, uh, you know, the crystalline phase will form very abruptly. So uh, we believe that uh, this is a kind of homogeneous crystallization. And uh, a cr homogeneous crystallization theory points out that uh, the crystalline uh, will first, uh, uh, the parent phase alpha will first form uh, a critical state that is a, a kind of a nucleation site uh, represented by the N here. And then uh, the crystal crystalline will be formed based on these nucleation sites. And um, uh, so we assumed that uh, you know before this amorphous uh, silicon phase transformed to its crystalline phase, we assume that uh, there is a kind of you know super alloyed phase formed, 
uh, which provides the nucleation sites here. And the uh, kinetic uh, equation uh, here, just um, uh, we can say that uh, the you know, crystallization rate, growth rate is uh, proportional not only to the amount of uh, parent phase, uh, but also the nucleation sites here. Based on the newly proposed uh, you know, model, we successfully just uh, reproduce the voltage curves uh, of silicon. Uh, we can see in this figure, and uh, uh, we can find that the voltage will jump uh, when silicon is highly elevated, and uh, well, the voltage curve will present a flat plateau in the de-discharge de branch. And this model can also trace uh, the variations of different D silicon phases, and we successfully captures uh, the growth, the abrupt uh, appearance of the crystalline silicon phase in D fashion, and, uh, and its gradual disappearance of this uh, crystalline phase in D D fashion. And in conclusion, uh, a mechanistic model is developed for silicon anodes and uh, the processes of phase transformations, crystallization, and amorphization underlying the electrical behaviors are resolved in this model. And this research is supported by the EPSRC and the Innovate UK. And uh, thank you everyone for your attention. And if you have any question, you're welcome to discuss with me in the next session.